So which type of magnesium is the best type? But more importantly, which type of magnesium is the best one for you? So you can get right into it. There's 10 different magnesiums that I'm going to talk about because there's a lot out there and it's really can be really confusing of which one is the best for you specifically, because in my opinion, there isn't just one overarching magnesium that's best than all the other because it really comes down to the individual. So the very first one is magnesium citrate. Now magnesium citrate is a great one for absorption of magnesium because it has a very high bio availability. So if you're someone that has run and tested your magnesium and see that you're deficient, this would be a great one to use because you're going to absorb it. But what's also great about this one, it doesn't have so much of the laxative effects as some of these other types of magnesiums. So if you are very sensitive with magnesium and tend to have a lot of runs because you're taking it, probably this one might be a little bit better. The other thing that's also great with magnesium citrate is it does help and it's been proven to show to help with anxiety. So if you're someone that stresses at night and having a hard time falling asleep because of your anxiety, using something like magnesium citrate can really calm you down. It's something I love using with my patients to help them with their sleep. I'll have them take magnesium citrate at night. The other thing I also love using about magnesium citrate is because magnesium citrate is an acidifying type of magnesium, meaning that it is more acidic, so it can actually help improve stomach acidity. So if you're someone that actually runs more alkaline, something that I do test with a lot of my patients and clients, if I find that they're having digestive issues where they're having a hard time breaking down their foods or having gassing and bloating, even a lot of times, even stomach acidity, which is kind of interesting. You would think it's because they have a high amount of acidity, but a lot of times it can also be because they are too alkaline. So magnesium citrate will help bring those levels down to help balance that out so that you can have a better digestive functionality. And it's something why I would use something like magnesium citrate. Now, the second one is magnesium oxide. I know that magnesium gets a bad rep because magnesium oxide, the body doesn't absorb it very well. And so you're not utilizing that much. But what I love about magnesium oxide is it is a great way to really actually help people with constipation. If you're someone that's really backed up, what I love about magnesium oxide, it can help really get the body getting things that moving throughout the digestive tract because it does excrete it. It doesn't use a lot of the magnesium and that's what people use magnesium oxide for. The other thing why I love using magnesium oxide for myself and for my patients is because magnesium oxide is an alkalizer. So just the opposite of magnesium citrate. So if you are someone that is always constantly acidic and having stomach acidity and dealing with digestive complaints, it's probably because you need to take some, a more an alkalizing type of magnesium. And this would be a great one. The third one is magnesium chloride. So magnesium chloride is also a great type of magnesium that is very easily absorbed in the digestive tract. So if you are deficient in magnesium, this would be a good one. Another reason why people would maybe use this, it can help with muscle soreness and pains and aches that people can use it as a cream. So this is also a great one to use if you are having muscle aches and pains. The fourth one is magnesium lactate. Now magnesium lactate, why people would probably use this one and why I use it with some of my patients and clients is if they have a very sensitive stomach and they find that all the different other types of magnesiums, they don't um, tend to sit well with their stomach. This one, they, even though it does help absorb a lot of the different magnesium, people find that this does better with their digestive system, with their stomach, so they don't have those aches and pains when they're taking it. So if you're someone that needs to take high doses of magnesium, probably taking something like magnesium lactate might be a great option to use alternatively than the other magnesiums. Magnesium lactate has also shown that it can also help with stress and anxiety anxiety, just like magnesium citrate. The fifth one is magnesium malate, which includes malic acid, which occurs naturally from foods such as fruits and wine. Research suggests that also magnesium malate is very easily absorbed in the digestive tract and can be more gentler on the digestive system if you're looking for another alternative to improve your low magnesium levels. There's also people, even my patients include, have reported that this type of magnesium is a little bit more gentler, but also it doesn't have as much of the laxative effects as some of the other magnesiums. So so if you already run really loose on stool and are looking to improve your magnesium levels, this might be a great option. It's also shown in some research that it has helped improve chronic fatigue as well as fibromyalgia. The sixth one is magnesium taurate. So basically this magnesium includes taurine, which is an important amino acid for a lot of different things, especially the cardiovascular health. But also I do find that this one does is an important amino acid for building lots of different neurotransmitters that people don't realize. So what's really great about this one, if you're someone that has high blood pressure, but also even have high blood sugar, it can help stabilize your blood sugar levels, but also help with cardiovascular health, 
help with a little bit with blood pressure and having that overall improvement of your heart health. The seventh one is magnesium L threonate. Now this is a great one because it is formed from mixing magnesium and threonic acid, which is a water soluble substance derived from the metabolic breakdown of vitamin C. Now what's so powerful about magnesium L threonate that's different from a lot of the different other ones is not only is it easily absorbed in the body, but it does actually impact the brain more. In fact, it's believed that it can cross the blood brain barrier. So therefore it can bring a lot of potential benefits to the brain, which in return can help support and manage things such as like depression, Alzheimer's disease, memory loss, focus and attentive issues and much more. But there's definitely more research that needs to be looked at this, but there definitely is promising things with magnesium L3 and 8. And it's something that I do like using if it makes sense. Number eight is magnesium sulfate. I love this one. It's also known as Epsom salt. And so it's basically a combination of magnesium and sulfur. What's great about this one is you could use it for in your bathtub. So if you're someone that's really stressed, at night, I love using Epsom salt baths where you can use it in your baths to calm your nervous system and relax your muscles. So if you have a hard time falling asleep at night because you're so nervous, try doing Epsom salt baths. This is a great one because it can also absorb the magnesium through the skin and relaxing the muscles and the nervous system. Now, if you're getting any value in today's video, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. It really helps out the algorithm. If you think you want to share this with other people, the ninth one is magnesium glycinate. So this is a combination of magnesium and also the amino acid of glycine. What's great about this one, because it has a very important amino acid that, in my opinion, is something I see also very deficient in a lot of my patients that I work with with ADHD, where glycine can be very deficient and this impacts a lot of their different neurotransmitters that are very important building blocks. But on top of that, research has shown that magnesium glycinate does help with sleep, helps with relaxation. It also has been shown to help with a lot of different inflammatory conditions, as well as helping with heart disease and diabetes. But as always, there needs to be a lot more research on this to really find more concrete, but there's definitely promising studies that are out there. But probably the more promising studies that I've kind of seen that and also what I love using magnesium glycinate for it has a lot of calming properties that can be used for things like anxiety, depression, stress, insomnia, and a lot of cases even use like things for ADHD because if you're different in something like glycine and magnesium, it's a good combo to use that I will use if it makes sense. Number 10 is magnesium orotate. Now, this is very commonly used amongst athletes to help improve endurance and energy. What is fascinating about a magnesium orotate is orotate includes erotic acid, which is a natural substance that is involved in the body's construction of genetic material uh, like DNA. Because of that, it plays a huge role in the production of ATP, which is something that generates energy in our cells, which happens in the mitochondria, which helps improve ATP. And then of course, generating a lot of those different energy throughout our cells. So you can see why a lot of athletes that are very high performers that would want to use stuff like this, but also has some promising research of improving and helping with cardiovascular health, but using it the wrong way can also have the opposite effects of impacting cardiovascular health if you're not using it correctly. Now that is a huge list and you might be wondering, am I magnesium deficient in the first place? A lot of these of why you would take these different types of magnesiums is because you are deficient in magnesium. Not all of them are used specifically to improve magnesium levels. So if you are wondering, do I have a magnesium deficiency? Well, there's definitely critical signs and warning signs that you need to be looking out for if you have a magnesium deficiency. And you should watch this video next that explain all the warning signs that you should be looking out for if you have a magnesium deficiency.